Hey everyone again, in this new video we have a new update from our good friend Torben Sondergaard where I have a new text here where Torben wants to share from his heart one more time to all of you out there what he's been going through, what he experienced right now these last days. The last update video was more about that Torben was sharing how God used Torben to reach out to this man what Torben called him Apollos in his update where this man, Apollos, he had been the most longest in jail comparing to all other men who are in that jail. And in that story it was more about that he did not know that when Apollos will be released because he had been there for the longest uh, comparing to everyone. But what actually happened where Torben shared the previous post is that uh, Torben discipled him. He reached out to him because Apollos somehow already met God, but he did not know so much about the Bible. And this is ended, it ended up with where Torben really preached the gospel to him. And there, Apollos, he got baptized. He received the Holy Spirit and his life got completely changed. But maybe some of you know about this, some of you don't know, but Torben also shared this in this post. Few days after, after Apollos' life got changed, after he got baptized and received the Holy Spirit, do you know what happened? Few days after, I think two days, Apollos got released. Apollos got released from that jail after for such a long time. And do you know what? That is really, really interesting. Why? Because God has really orchestrated everything together on the, where everything is on his right time. Try to imagine, Apollos like got changed now in the prison after being in the prison for years and two days after being born again, now he's released where God has continued taking him to lead him, to use him for his kingdom. So it's really amazing to hear how God is really in control in all of these things. But as I said, I have a new update here from Torben. And let's just go straight into it, what Torben has to say here. And the headlines start with this. This place can make you crazy. Apollos left me and the fake gospel makes it really difficult here. But thank God he is in control. Update from Torben Sundergaard Bakers County Jail. And Torben says here, Greetings to all of you out there and blessings in the name of Jesus. I thank God for you all and I'm truly thankful for your prayers and support to me and my family. Today is the 21st day, exactly three weeks ago. I was put in the handcuffs and taken to jail by the FBI and the Homeland Security as they have been told falsely that I've been smuggling weapons from Mexico to America and this crazy journey began. The day before, I was preaching the gospel in Orlando and had a powerful time. Many got healed and set free and baptized over 10 people to Jesus. I recorded many testimonies to share with all of you, but then I got arrested and the FBI took my phone. Now three weeks later, I'm still sitting in my orange jail suit, now with all full beard and a hair, and it is still growing. Yes, I look really different, but I also feel different. What a journey. It has truly been life-changing, totally frightening and scary at times, and beautiful and amazing at other times. My last update was beautiful, how God sent me to Apollos, as I called him. And I got the honor to baptize him here in jail and how I saw several healed and cast out the first demon on the jail floor. See the link here. So with this video on the description, you can see that there's a link on the previous update from Torben where he shared more in details for what actually happened. So I really encourage you, if you haven't listened to the other previous update, go and click on the link and listen to it because it has linked to what has been continued with this one. And Torben continued to say here, Many things has changed since two days after Apollos was sent away. I truly miss him. I miss discipling him and sharing communion with him in my cell. He was so hungry for God and we had a really good time together. Now I had no one here. There are few who are little open to God, but those don't speak English enough for me to really have fellowship and share with them. The rest yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm truly grieved in my heart, heart over what I see here. There are several people here who were at our Bible study we had last time, something Apollos had been having, but they are just not there when it comes to Jesus. 
I am so grieved by the false Christianity they have received in prison. Not to say that it was Apollo's fault because many of them came from prison before they came here. It was there they became Christian. And that has really destroyed them in such a way that they have now become a hardcore enemies of the true gospel. They all have Bible. They all talk about God. They have all given their life to Jesus, if you ask them, but it stops there. They are still in their sin. They love their sin. They are cursing God with their mouth and they have so much hate in their heart, but yes, they believe God, they believe in God and are saved, if you would ask them. There are people coming here every week with Bibles and Bible tracts. And some of those tracts are just so bad. It's just acknowledge that you have sinned, believe in Jesus and pray this prayer and you now have a ticket to heaven. This is really bad. And this is the gospel most people here have received and truly believe in now. There's no talk about God as holy. No talk about true repentance. Nothing about baptism. Nothing about need to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Christ. And I'm truly sad to see how this fake gospel that has been preached in the prison has destroyed so much amongst the people here that they now are enemy against God in their life, in their speech, in everything in them. I'm not telling that all Christian prison work is bad, but just sharing what I have experienced. The other day, I got the chance to sit down with one of those Christians here. Yes, one who is often walking around with a Bible talking about God. I share the gospel with him. And in the middle of me talking about sin, repentance, and Jesus as the judge, he just stood up and left. And there I sat alone in my cell and he did not come back. He didn't want to hear what I had to say. It is so sad. They all have the name of Christian, but are living in sin and rebellious and rebellion. One moment they prayed and talk about Jesus, and the next moment they curse God and everyone else. It is, it is truly hard to be a witness to it. I truly miss Apollos, as I called him. He was a true brother in Christ. I miss sharing communion with him, as we did in my cell. And I miss sharing the amazing salvation we have in Christ. There have also been different problems here the last days. The other night, an inmate went crazy and he was shouting, kicking the door the whole night, giving us only one or two hours of sleep. He thought that some people here he's been fighting with had been sending people to his fiance to hurt her. So he was very desperate and called the police several times and was shouting, don't hurt her, don't hurt her, don't hurt her. In the end, he was removed from here it was very hard to hear and be a witness to. Later, I found out that it was just all in his head, that there had been no one at his fiance's place and it was just something he had in his head. This place can truly make you crazy if you don't have God with you. For me, I just love having the word and love being in prayer. To be in the word and to be in the prayer is like a refuge. Jesus is the great strong tower. I run into and I'm safe in there. In prayer and in the word, I come away from this crazy world and I find peace. But I will share more about that another time. I was hoping to come out on a bond at the beginning of this week. Instead, Apollos left and crazy things start to happen. So my longing to come out and be with my wife had really grown even more to a place that almost consumed me. I could not think of anything else, so I was imagining and fantasizing being out with her all the time. It came to a point where I had to stop and get help from God. I could not go every day hoping and fantasizing and then becoming disappointed when it did not happen. It has been hard for Lena also, that she also really misses me. But then God started to speak to us both, and He started to remind us of different times where he was always faithful, where we have seen God's faithfulness in our life. Yes, God has always been faithful in our life, but very often it didn't happen the way we thought it would happen or with the speed we thought it would happen. 
I was also reminded of Joseph again, how he was in jail, and there he spoke to this servant and said, Remember me when you go back to Pharaoh. But then how the servant forgot Joseph, so he spent two more years in jail. Even though the servant forgot Joseph, God did not. It was just not Joseph's time yet. But when it was Joseph's time, God did it all in a such amazing way. I'm not saying I will be here two more years, but I'm saying that God is in control and He will make things happen in His time. The Jews also tried to kill Jesus several times. Several times they picked up stones to kill Him, but it was not yet His time to give His life. And when it finally was His time, we read this. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me unless it has been given you from above. John chapter 19, verse 10 to 11. Here we see that Pilate had no power except which was given to him from God. God has all the power. He could take me out today if he wanted. But if he wants to use me here to advance the kingdom some more, then I am ready for that. I truly see and believe that he is in control and that this is going to be a big blessing for us and for many other people out there. And that what is happening with me right now is going to advance the kingdom of God. So this has given me so much peace and hope that our life is in God's hand. It is not in the FBI's hand. It is not in Homeland Security's hands. It is not in ICE hands. It is not in the lawyer's hands, but it is in God's hands. With all that said, I still truly miss my wife, family, and all our friends out there. I long to see them all, but I have peace being here as long as God wants. I will talk to my lawyer later today, and I know that he is working on different things to get me out on a bond. When that happens, I will receive it with joy. Until then, I will give it over to God and let His will happen with my life. My prayer for the church out there is that the true gospel will be preached, that people will truly repent from their sin, get baptized to Christ, and receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, and then walk as a true disciple of Christ, that they will live the life we read about in the book of Acts, the normal type of life that is for all of us. My prayer also for all of you out there who have remembered me and my family, you who have been sending blessings and greetings to us, and I really truly thank God for you all. The harvest is truly great and ripe. Be bold and share the good news of the kingdom. God bless you all out there. Your love truly means so much to me and my family. I could cry when I think about and hear all the greetings my wife is telling me about. Your brother in Christ. I can testify that I love God more than ever before. I'm truly thankful for Him saving me and I have a great comfort in knowing that everything is in His hands. Jesus, I love you I will, and I will always follow you. Love and grace to all of you. Thank you again in Jesus' name, Torben Sondergaard. <sighs> Guys, come on. This is really, really crazy what's going on. But this is also the reality. But at the same time, in the midst of craziness, what Torben is sharing, God is in control. God is really in control. But one thing, one thing that really stood up inside of me when I was reading this text is right now what I really wish to be at one place is to be right now together with my friend Torpin, to be there in jail with him, just to be there with him and to go through this together. Why? Because we love him. He is our brother. We all, you all, we all love him. And we just want to support him in, in all kinds of way we can. And we know the best way we can support him and his family is through prayers through prayers or through prayer and fasting. But what I also remind me about this verse in Hebrew chapter 13, verse three, I know I've been reading this before, but I just want to read it again. And it says here, 
continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as you yourself were suffering so he says continue to remember those in prison as you were there together with them and that is now i really start to understand this verse in a way for me to understand and to hear what torben is going through right now it's really that feeling i want to be there right now if there's a one place i want to be is to be in the prison there together with him just just to be there for him support him to remember those who are in prison as you were there together with them in prison so guys i hope this will somehow encourage you encourage you to keep on going for christ even more encourage you to go with the gospel to go out and make disciples even more as torben really encourages us to do so but also keep on praying for torben and his family and trust in him as torben says that god is in control everything is in god's hand so let us just put trust in him really put trust in him what's happening right now with torben and also put trust in him in everything as we keep on following jesus and obeying him so god bless you out there bye bye